Hi everyone. Um, so today I'm going to start by introducing you to a distillation apparatus by building one. Um, and as we build, we're going to talk about all of the pieces of it and what they do. Um, and then we're going to get one running to show you uh, what that actually looks like. Um, so uh, let's actually just kind of follow the path of the solvents that you're going to be distilling and start with the distillation pot, which is a 100 mil round bottom flask today. Um, so this is where your solvents are going to be sitting and they're going to be heated uh, in an adorable little saucepan, uh, which has a thin layer of sand at the bottom of it. And that sand is going to get really hot and it's going to cup around the rounded bottom of the round bottom flask and introduce heat faster than if we just boop, set it onto a little contact point, uh, round on flat does not transfer heat very quickly. Um, so uh, solvents in, little sand at the bottom and get this hot. And then uh, the solvents are going to start evaporating in this setup. Um, I'm gonna add a boiling chip which is just a tiny little shard of like silica or alumina or some kind of inorganic compound. Um, that's not going to mix with the solvents or affect them at all. But what they are is they're just these tiny little jagged crystals and they encourage the formation of tiny safe bubbles instead of big exploding popping ones. Um, so that's why we had boiling chips. Um, so we've got a nice uh, safe boil going on here. The next piece that the fumes of the solvent are going to travel through are this fractionated condenser here. Um, now, what you can see in here is a bunch of copper wire. And what that copper wire is going to do is it's going to condense the solvents as they travel up the column. And uh, when they condense and turn back into liquids, they're gonna drip back down. And that sounds counterproductive to what we're trying to do. But what we're really trying to do is just slow down the escape of the solvents. Um, this whole copper wire here has to heat up to the boiling point of the solvent passing through before a solvent is allowed to reach the top of this piece of glass. And what that means is your lowest boiling point solvent is going to heat up this coil of wire uh, up to its boiling point, and then it's gonna be allowed to pass. And then there's gonna be a period of time where your next highest boiling point solvent is going to have to heat up this copper before it's allowed to pass and get up to the top of this glassware. So this copper buys you time between when the first lowest boiling solvent escapes and when the second does. That allows for a better separation of your solvents and thus you get a better distillation. So um, that's going to go right on top of our round bottom flask. I'm gonna go a little high here. Working with these clamps is always awkward and takes forever. And this is a huge glass setup, so definitely a tricky little manual manipulation struggle. So the next thing that we're going to attach is a three-way adapter. And it's got a lot of different uh, ends here with different purposes. I'm using these little plastic clamps just to clamp my glassware together and keep it stable. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to attach to my three-way adapter is a thermometer. Um, I've got a little thermometer adapter up here and I have a thermometer which I've rigged up to seal down onto this piece of glass to create an airtight seal 
so that no gases can escape the top. And then I'm just going to wiggle this thermometer so that the thermometer bulb, which is reading the temperature, is below this uh, arm that's going to let the vapors out. So the purpose of this thermometer is to tell me which solvent is, which solvent is coming across. Um, so after the solvent uh, has heated up this copper coil and it passes up here, then it's going to have to heat up my thermometer bulb before it's allowed to proceed out of the system. Now, it's going to heat up the thermometer bulb to the uh, boiling point of that solvent. And so I can sit here and watch my thermometer uh, get hotter and increase its temperature reading. And when it plateaus, when it stays steady at a certain temperature, that means that the solvent that is heating it up, uh, that's the boiling point of the solvent, and the solvent is now going to be escaping out of this arm, uh, out of the system for collection. So the thermometer allows me to identify and uh, track the solvents which are escaping out of the system. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to add is my means of collecting the solvent as it escapes. And for this, I'm going to use a water jacketed condenser. Now, this is a tube in a tube. Um, so there is a central, central tube, which uh, is very similar to just a glass pipe, just like any other. Um, and around that, there is a jacket, which is a tube that runs water uh, over that central tube. So I'm gonna pump water in through this nozzle and out of another one, and the water is going to cool the inner tube. And so as gases flow through the tube, they're going to be cooled and they're going to have to condense so that it can collect them as liquids out here. Um, so yeah, this is a matter of collecting the solvents after they've been separated. I'm gonna hold on to that with a piece of plastic clamp here. And I'm going to bring this claw up to support it. And it might look a little off kilter. And there's a reason for that. Um, I want this column to be straight up and down. That's how it's going to most effectively separate out my solvents and run effectively. I want this tube where I'm collecting and cooling those vapors to be slightly slanted downwards because I'm gonna collect it at this end and I just want to form drops up here that can slide down. So this needs to be slightly downward. And the last thing that I'm going to hook on to this big glass monstrosity is uh, this is called the drying tube. Um, and all we're doing is using this nice fine nozzle to direct the drops as they slide out of this condenser. Um, so that when I have my full setup, um, I can put a little collection vial down here and collect the drops nicely as they come out. Um, so before this thing's ready to run, um, I'm going to have to hook up the water jacketed condenser to a source of water. Um, we just have hoses coming out of sinks here. Um, so one key I uh, point of success, I guess, for getting a water jacketed condenser to work is that you fill from the bottom. So the water is going to come from the sink into the bottom nozzle. And then it has to fill up this entire volume with water before I allow it to run out into another hose 
which I'm just going to run into the sink out there. Um, so yeah, we're filling from the bottom. It's going the water is going to fill up this whole volume. It's going to cool down uh, the tube in the middle here, and then the water is going to run out the top, and the uh, drips of solvent that we're collecting are going to run out this way. Um, so I think uh, that's most of what I want to talk about for the installation setup now. Um, we're going to go ahead and build, or probably just transfer this one over to the hood and get it running so that you guys can see what that looks like. Okay, so we have moved most of our setup uh, from that counter over there into the hood where we can do our experiment. Um, I've got a few final things to do uh, until I can go ahead and start heating up my solvents to distill it. So, you remember me talking about our condenser here um, and how the copper is going to be cooling down things and making them uh, fall back into the distillation pot. Um, if this glass on the exterior is also cold, it's going to provide too much of a barrier and my solids will never be able to escape. So in order to uh, let the glass warm up a little bit faster, I'm gonna insulate with tin foil. chip in it. Um, I've got a stir bar in it and that's all just going to like agitate the solvent to encourage tiny bubble formation. Here is my mixture of ethyl acetate and toluene. Um, so that's going to go right in. So Let's go ahead and got a clamp right here. One trick when you're building a massive apparatus like this is to hang your round bottom flask or your reaction flask above the heat source, get the heat source hot, and then bring the heat up to your reaction flask. Because if I had to drop this whole thing down to meet the heat, that'd be way harder. So I'm going to just wiggle this a little bit, make sure I can feel it contacting that sand in there. Turn the stirring on. And very soon I would expect to see some uh, fogginess in the glass here as the vapors begin to uh, escape the liquid and condense on here. Um, and then I can actually monitor the progress of this by feeling the aluminum foil. Um, and it's going to heat up depending on how high the vapors have uh, gotten and heating up that copper. When they've heated up all the copper, I'm gonna be able to feel the heat right here. And then what I'm gonna be looking for 
is for my thermometer reading to start increasing because the fumes are going to start hitting the thermometer pole. And that's when I know that the fumes are right here and they are just about ready to be collected. Now, that heating step, that heating step is going to take 20 or 30 minutes. It's going to be a little while. Um, but uh, just to be ready for when, just to be ready for when the vapors are ready to come over, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my water. Uh, that's just hooked up to a hose back here. And I want enough water flow that the uh, glass is completely filled. I've got the occasional bubble here, but the whole um, the whole surface of that inner tube in the water jacket and condenser is being cooled right now. So I have enough water. I can turn it up later once I actually start uh, seeing fumes hit it because I'm going to need to cool it as the fumes warm up the system. Uh, but this is perfectly adequate for now. Um, so for now, um, I'm going to go ahead and let this thing run. Um, I'm going to come back once I actually see some temperature increasing and some dripping coming out into my collection flask. And then we're going to talk about the rest of the lab from there. Hello everyone. So we're back um, after a few minutes of heating time. You can see that we've added some extra insulation in parts just to speed up the process. Um, so the fumes have climbed the entire column and now the thermometer is reading a healthy 77 or 79 degrees Celsius, um, which should correlate pretty closely to the, temp to the boiling point of ethyl acetate. Um, so we've got fumes coming across the three-way adapter, which is now covered in aluminum foil. Uh, and then we've got water running over our water jacketed condenser, and we've got drips of solvent being collected down here. And so that is an excellent drip rate for right now. Um, so that's how I know that my temperature is good on the distillation. Um, so there's just a few things that I'm going to be looking for from here. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on that temperature because if I see it change at all, um, if I see the uh, temperature on the thermometer get hotter, then that might indicate that the higher boiling point toluene is starting to collect on the thermometer and I should stop collecting because uh, my ethyl acetate is about to be contaminated. Um, conversely, I might also see the temperature drop, which would mean that all of the ethyl acetate has left the system already, and the toluene is now in the process of coming up and has not hit the uh, thermometer yet. So right now, it's at this nice steady plateau right around the boiling point of ethyl acetate, and if I see it deviate from that, uh, then I know that I'm done collecting ethyl acetate. Um, so I'm going to continue to collect this, keep an eye on the thermometer, and I will let you guys know what the final mass of my ethyl acetate is. That will allow you to uh, go through the density to get the volume of it, um, and then we can determine the volume ratio of toluene to ethyl acetate that was in the original sample, assuming that the rest of the volume was toluene. So we'll get that to you soon. Uh, just a little update. Um, after about 10 or so minutes of distillation, our thermometer has reached a steady 85 and is now increasing. So this is heading towards the uh, boiling point of toluene, which is 110. Uh, the toluene is definitely hitting the three-way adapter at this time. We've collected about, uh, I'm going to about half a container full of uh, ethyl acetate. I'll get you guys an exact mass of that shortly. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and kill this just by uh, taking this off of the holder. And uh, yeah, 